Praise the Lord. Let's pray about our heads. Holy Father, we thank you for giving this time when we could have been sitting home. Lord, we are here in your presence. Speak through your servant. Your word is a double-edged sword. Cut my heart first, Lord. Let me not say anything that's not needed. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. So I used to work at a store called Gordman's. It was on May and uh, Independence. So this is one of my first jobs. And I used to do closing. Closing means you would have to do all the cleanup at the end. So Christmas time from Thanksgiving to New Year's is extended hours. So you have to stay late. So I was cleaning up the department that I belonged in. And I got a call from my boss saying, Ben, can you come and help this lady? So I go to the checkout and she's in a wheelchair and she has a cart full of stuff. And also there's more stuff that wouldn't fit in the cart. So I, me and another guy has to help her. So she's in her wheelchair going like three miles per hour and we're behind her and she's passing several parking lots. And we're like, where's her car? And she keeps going. And we follow her, and he's, uh, he has a card, and I have the bags. She takes us past Independence. So now we are outside of Gordman's parking lot. So if you guys know where it is, it's where Guitar Center and Home Depot is, uh, and Best Buy. So we pass Independence. There's a lot of feedback. Um, we pass Independence, and we go into this apartment complex called Lakeview Towers. So we're in the Lakeview Towers. She takes us to the back, and she takes us up to the eighth floor through the freight elevator because n none of the stuff would fit, and her cart wouldn't fit. So she takes us to her apartment, and she says, just leave it. So she <laughs> makes us puts a, put all the bags and the cart. We empty it out, and I have never been to a house like that. And let me show you an example. This is not her house. I just found an example. So she is a hoarder. A hoarder is a person who collects unwanted things and wanted things and don't know how to get rid of. So and we didn't know how she moved around because she's in a wheelchair. So she just tells us, leave it. And we, we leave and then we get in trouble because we've been missing for 25 minutes. So hold that story in your mind. I want to tell you about something that happened in the Jewish history. So let's go to um, 1 Chronicles 17, verse 1 and 2. 1 Chronicles 17, 1 and 2. David wanted to build a place for the Lord. And he says this in multiple places. Behold, I dwell in a house of cedar, but the ark of the covenant of the Lord is under a tent. And Nathan said to David, do all that is in your heart, for God is with you. And we all know what happened after that. Um, David plans, but he doesn't get to do it. His son Solomon goes on to build this magnificent building through the help his father started, his, start, his dad collected things, and then through the help of the, the Lebanese kings, um, they brought materials and they built this grand building. But we know what happens to that building through the Babylonians. Second Kings 25 verses eight and nine says, in the first month of the seventh day of the month, that was the 19th, year of King Nebuchadnezzar, king of Babylon, Nebu Zardan, the captain of the bodyguard, a servant of king of Babylon, came to Jerusalem, and he burned the house of the Lord and the king's house and all the houses in, in, of Jerusalem. Very um, great house he burned down. So the first one gets destroyed by Nebuchadnezzar. And um, we know that story, what happens. They get, they get taken to Babylon, 
And there's a promise that that remnant would come back in what, how many years? 70 years. So that process starts upon Cyrus taking over the Medo-Persian Empire and also destroying the Babylonian and now he owns all of Babylon. So Cyrus says, this is his decree in Ezra 1-2. Thus says Cyrus king of Persia, the Lord, the God of heaven, has given me all the kingdoms of the earth and he has charged me to build him a house at Jerusalem which is in Judah. Whoever is among you and all his people, may his God be with him and let him go to Jerusalem, which is in Judah, and rebuild the house of the Lord, the God of Israel. He is the God who is in Jerusalem. So this is how the reconstruction of that temple that was destroyed by the Babylonians happened. So this picture doesn't make it justify it because we know what happens when Zerubbabel and the company with Cyrus's blessing rebuilds the temple. When they laid the foundation, the pastor upagens who were all there, they all cried. In Ezra, it says that, right? These are all things you guys know and Phoebe Chechi and Pastor Engel covered this, uh, a, a bunch of what I'm gonna say already last Saturday. So the older pastors or the priest all cried out and their reason for their crying is not explained in Ezra, but it is explained in Haggai. And where Haggai is, uh, um, God is asking him, didn't your people cry out because they did not like the new construction, meaning the glory of the old one was not there for the second one. But then this goes on for a while Herod comes up into power, the Edomite king, and he takes over Judea, or his, the whole Herodian um, clan, and they rebuilt, or they built a pond that was already there, and that is what the building that Jesus goes and works under. So there is a portion in Matthew that talks about Jesus was at the Festival of the dedication. So I don't know if the festival, of, if that was dedicated that day or they were just celebrating the anniversary of the dedication. And that's in John 10, 22. Then came the festival of dedication at Jerusalem. It was winter and Jesus was in the temple courts walking in Solomon's corridors. So, so Jesus is there. And that is the temple he is in, and he knows, right? But we all know what happens with that one. And that is when Jesus is telling in Matthew chapter 24, Jesus left the temple and was walking away with his disciples. And the disciples came up to him and, and called attention to this building. Do you see all these things? I tell you, not one stone here will be left on another. Every one will be thrown down. So what happens? The second one gets destroyed by the Roman Empire in AD 70. So the first one gets built, it gets destroyed. The second one gets built, it gets destroyed. My topic here is not about Jewish history or Jewish temples. Um, I wanna point out to you something. It's easy to us to blame the Babylonians how dare they come and destroy God's temple? How dare the Romans come and destroy something and take away things? But what we don't realize is in Matthew chapter 16, verse 18, Jesus said, I will build my church. I will build my church and the gates of hell will not prevail. My friends, my topic is 1 Corinthians chapter 3, verse 16. If anyone destroys God's temple, I will destroy him. It's easy for us to say the Romans destroyed in 70 AD, but what about us, the living temple that is being destroyed every day? What is in our hearts? We are the living temple. And every day we 
are killing this temple. And God is saying, I will destroy it. He, he made the, the Babylonians destroy the first one. The Romans kill, uh, destroy the second one. And he's saying, I will destroy this one. Because if you play with me, what I made for my purpose, I will destroy. It's easy for us to uh, blame them, but we, don't, we never look inside towards us. Um, there's something called squatters, right? You guys know that, right? Um, squatters, what um, do we do? Yes. Squatters, right, is a big thing in America because if somebody finds an unoccupied home, comes in and stays there, under a certain period, you can't kick them out. There's a lot of people in our hearts right now living rent-free. It's time to kick those things out. Your temple is not a city of refuge, so a bunch of <laughs> non-immigrants would come and take refuge in that. You are the living, holy temple. It is not for someone to come claim squatters, right? It is not someone to claim a refugee city. It is holy and it is kept pure for him to dwell in. But Jesus has no room in it. We have so much stuff in our house. Can you show me the squatters picture again? The squatters, the ladies' house? There's so much junk in our, in our heart. There's no room for Christ. There's no room because we are so busy with, with everything else. We have, we have even, even Hebron, right? Hebron could get in your way with the Lord. Church activities could get in the way. We say we do it in your name, Lord, but the Lord says, I did not know you. We have room for everyone else and everything else, and all we do is give Jesus a couch in the living room and say, you can come stay here, Lord. He is the Lord of the heart. He is the Lord of the whole temple. But we have room for everything else and everyone else. And there are people in your hearts right now claiming squatters right you need to kick them out. You and I are not Esau that we will sell our birthright for a, a bowl of soup or paisum. But we are co-heirs with Christ waiting for that inheritance. And but what do we do? We sell this birthright. We sell what we got for free so we could have fleeting pleasure of this earth. That's what Moses said, right? I rather suffer with my people than enjoy the pleasures of Egypt. It is high time for us to, to know that we are destroying the God's temple. So many, so many people are in our hearts right now. We just keep them around for no purpose. They don't even know they're in See, there's people living rent-free in you right now. Like, they don't even know they're there. What are the, some of the things that's in our heart? One thing is what? Pride, right? Pride goes before fall. Pride goes before destruction and a haughty spirit before a fall. Proverbs 16, 18. So much pride. Because of this whole pride thing, Look, look at, look at the, what the Pentecostal world is happening. I don't want to let go of my chair. I don't want to let go of what little kingdom I built. So I'm going to do everything I can, even sell Jesus. Sell my birthright so I could have this tiny little portion in human history. You think, you think people are going to remember you after you're dead? Pastor Ngo always says, after six months, you're just a photo in, hanging in, in, on, on a wall. But we sell our birthrights and we sell ourselves so we could have tiny little pleasure and tiny little spot 
in, in, in the Malayali Pentecostal history that nobody will remember. You think these kids even know what the heck things are? They don't care. Disobedience is one of the biggest things. No regard for parents, no regard for rule of law. I mean, I was, I was really blessed by Phoebe Chase's message last Saturday. No regard, no obedience for the, the place of worship. Don't even, I mean, you know, that, that, that's where we're at, right? Any age. An unconcerned mind. Disregarding others. Next one. Their destiny is destruction, and their God is their stomach, and their glory is their shame. Their mind is set on earthly things. These are all the things that are in our hearts, taking hold and making no room for Christ. How many times has he been knocking? But we have maybe a couch or a lazy boy for him when he wants the whole house. And then deception. Everyone lies to their neighbor. They flatter with their lips, but harbor deception in their hearts. Psalm 12, 2. Lying for a, anything to happen, anything to get your way, you will lie through and make deception and make other gullible people fall into it. And then the next one, none of us have any of that. So let all bitterness and wrath and anger and clamor and slander be put away from you along with all malice. This thing consumes us. Decision making when you're angry, <laughs> nobody should do it. Because you, 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 you end up regretting what you just made. And then sluggardness. These are just a few examples. I, c I could just keep going. We could just stay, be here all night. Be very careful then how you live, not as unwise but wise, making the most of every opportunity because the days are evil. And sluggardness, we could say here, how many times are we pushing away the Holy Spirit? How many times are we hearing the word, hearing God calling us back or the same message that God is trying to speak to us through many different people, or even through his own audible voice, or through your own voice, but we push away saying, no, later. I'll, I'll get more serious later. I'll get more serious later. Jesus is the, the husband of the vineyard. And if he comes again and again, and he sees that the fruit is not making any fruit, one day he will just cut it off. But because we live in the grace period, we're giving chance over and over and over again. And the Holy Spirit is waiting outside. And he's waiting to come inside and do a complete cleanup. Now you guys know where I got those pictures from. Everybody remember that? Tholasi's heart? No, no, I, I didn't want to say the real name because there's people here. No, I know the real name. <laughs> the Holy Spirit wants to come in and clean our hearts out. Let me read uh, 1 Corinthians 3.13 again. If anyone destroys God's temple, God will destroy him. For God's temple is holy, and you are that temple. I, I'm not going to go into, I don't know anything about the third temple or anything, but I just believe I'm the temple. <laughs> Jesus said, I will build my church. And I'm glad that he picked me. How many times are we going to neglect this voice? How many times are we going to keep saying no when he wants to come and clean us up? 
we think that this is for the outside world. Guys, it is not. Jesus doesn't talk to anyone outside. He's this is in Corinthians. He's talking to the church. If you destroy my temple, I will destroy you. How many times are we going to neglect? I want to sing a song that pretty much sells this whole message. But I want you to really think about the words. Tanga chira gadiyatra nal kettittum shanga kudade ninne talli sangedam nyan kodu annyarkannortida sangeda pettidunu talli sangedam nyan kodu ിൽ എന്നും അതിവസിക്ക വന്ന ഉന്നതനാം തങ്ക പ്രാവേനീ വന്നെന്നിൽ എന്നും അതിവസിക്ക കർത്തനെയത്ര അനുഗ്രഹങ്ങൾ അയ്യോ നഷ്ടമാക്കി വിധം കഷ്ടത തന്നിൽ വലയുന്നു ഞാനിത തട്ടിയുണർത്തണമേ എന്നും കഷ്ടത തന്നിൽ വലയുന്നു ഞാനിത തട്ടിയുണർത്തണമേ ശൂന്യവും പാഴുമാം തള്ളിയതാമേ നിൻ മന്ദിരം തന്നിലെന്നു ദേവാ വന്നു പാർത്തു ശുദ്ധി ചെയ്തു നിൻ വീടിൻ്റെ നിന്നയാകണമേ ദേവാ വന്നു പാർത്തു ശുദ്ധി ചെയ്തു നിൻ വീടിൻ്റെ നിന്നയാകണമേ ജീവിതം ഇന്നും ശരിയായിട്ടില്ലയോ ജീവിപ്പിക്കൂ കർത്തനെ വന്നു ജീവനും ശക്തിയും സ്നേഹവും തന്നെന്നെ ജീവിപ്പിച്ചിടണമേ വന്നു ജീവനും ശക്തിയും സ്നേഹവും തന്നെന്നെ ജീവിപ്പിച്ചിടണമേ ശക്തിയൻ സിം ഹാസനെ ജയ വീരനായി വാഴുന്നു യേശു രാജൻ എന്നിൽ ശക്തിയോടെ വന്നു വാണിടും നേരത്തിൽ ശക്തനായി ജീവിക്കും ഞാൻ എന്നിൽ ശക്തിയോടെ വന്നു വാണിടും ശക്തനായി ജീവിക്കും ഞാൻ എൻ അലങ്കാര വസ്ത്രം ധരിച്ചിടും ഞാൻ ഇന്നു മുതൽ ദൈവമേ മേലാൽ എന്നിൽ അശുദ്ധനും ചെലവിഹീനും ചേർന്നു വരികയില്ല മേലാൽ എന്നിൽ അശുദ്ധനും ചെലവിഹീനും ചേർന്നു വരികയില്ല ഈ വിധത്തിൽ പരിപാലിക്കപ്പെട്ടിടാൻ ദൈവാത്മാവേ വന്നെന്നിൽ എന്നും 
ആവസിച്ചു തവ തേജസാലുടെ ജീവൻ പ്രക്ഷോഭിപ്പിക്ക എന്നും ആവസിച്ചു തവ തേജസാലുടെ ജീവൻ പ്രക്ഷോഭിപ്പിക്ക ശൂന്യവും പാഴുമാം തള്ളിയതാമേനിൻ മന്ദിരം തന്നിലെന്നു ദേവ വന്നു പാർത്തു ശുദ്ധി ചെയ്തു നിൻ വീടിൻ്റെ നിന്നായി ആകറ്റണമേ ദേവ വന്നു പാർത്തു ശുദ്ധി ചെയ്തു നിൻ വീടിൻ്റെ നിന്നായി ആകറ്റണമേ Please do not destroy the temple. Cry out today, Lord. I don't want to destroy your temple. The the Babylonians did it, the Romans did it, and I don't want to be the third one to destroy this temple that you're in. Come into my heart. There's so many squatters, there's so many people hoarding my heart, but I don't want anyone to remain there. You need to be the Lord. It's not even mine, it's yours. Come into our heart, Lord. Amen.